Uh, straight on to the papers. Dipti is here on set today. A lot of reactions from Israel. This is after the uh, Supreme Court ruled against the local director of Human Rights Watch there, Dipti. That's right. That director, Omar Shakir, is facing expulsion uh, from Israel for his perceived advocacy against Israel's Jewish settlements in the occupied West Bank. Uh, it's on the front page of the Jerusalem Post now. Uh, it's actually uh, rather not the Supreme Court, but the High Court steward. Uh, for Israeli authorities, this amounts to um, support for the Palestinian boycott movement. Human Rights says it will appeal the decision. Um, there's an article in uh, the Jerusalem Post today that says this case is doubly complicated since much of um, uh, Shakir's advocacy was through Twitter. So will the High Court um, ruling usher in a new age of Israeli policing social media as well? Or was this just an exceptional case against uh, this man in particular, Shakir? That's a question being asked by the Jerusalem Post in this article today. Nonetheless, so the backlash has been swift against this rule. Shakir himself called it, uh, quote, chilling. Critics have compared Israel to Syria, North, North Korea and Iran. And in fact, the editors of Haaretz today, the center left paper, accuse the government of, quote, taking another step down the dubious road of authoritarian regimes that deny human rights and silence criticism at all cost. Now, the papers today are picking up on the story of uh, the deaths of nine members of a Mormon family, most of them children in northern Mexico, uh, really shocking the country there. Yeah, it's dominating not just the Mexican papers, but really the international papers today, Stuart. It was uh, on the homepage of El Universal's website earlier this Wednesday. That's a Mexican um, paper. Not, it's not clear whether this was a case of mistaken identity Indeed, the family uh, and their community were living in a remote mountainous region where the Sinaloa cartel in particular have been waging turf wars for uh, years and years and years now. A picture of the family. Um, uh, so out of the nine members, six of them were children, uh, some of them not even a year old. Um, they, that's a family on the front page of El País, a Spanish daily. Uh, the story, as recounted by family members on Facebook, is that three mothers in three um, vehicles were traveling to Chihuahua and Phoenix when they were ambushed by cartel members, shot, killed, and some of them burned in cold blood. Mm. And this family is actually part of a remote Mormon community, isn't it, living in uh, Mexico, originally, though, from the U.S.? Yeah, and the New York Times is looking at the story and, and really the origins of this community, a fundamentalist community, must be said. Uh, they're an offshoot of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, they actually headed south to Mexico decades ago to practice polygamy after polygamy was outlawed by the church. The community today are mostly successful farmers, raising children who are dual citizens. Uh, living as an observant religious community. More recently, though, the Times says they have faced new challenges from cartels, particularly with cartels taking control of gasoline, which has uh, affected their farming uh, and uh, just growing dangers and around their security. That's le led to some families leaving back to the U.S. Uh, for the editors of the Wall Street Journal, it's likely that the deaths were indeed a warning from the cartels to everyone about who's in charge in Mexico. And this is obviously a big issue. Um, the Wall Street Journal evoking what it calls a cartelization of Mexico. But notes also that American drug users using the drugs from this trade, from this drug war, are just as complicit in fueling this, quote, wanton violence. Let's move on to a different story for you uh, now on the programme. The British paper, The Independent, this is uh, concentrating uh, on a warning by 11,000 scientists. Incredible to get all of them uh, working together from right around the world, isn't it? That's right. These 11,000 scientists have penned an a, a open letter, if you like, in a science journal. 11,000 journalists from 153 nations. Uh, the Independent, look at that picture. It's incredible. Mm. Um, basically, a, a warning, an unprecedented warning about the future of humanity as they declare a global uh, climate emergency. Uh, one uh, U.S. professor spearheading the letter uh, saying that despite 40 years of major negotiations, we have failed to address this crisis. And finally from Dipti, uh, we're going to talk about Keanu Reeves. Why not? Um, <laughs> the Internet's boyfriend, apparently he has found a girlfriend. Well, it's not confirmed yet, um, but it <laughs> would appear so. And, you know, I mean, how could you not be happy for him? He's you know he's obviously gorgeous, and uh, but if he's you say so. uh, and but he's also <laughs> known to be generous and humble and down to earth, uh, and he's also you know gone through quite a bit of tragedy in his life. So it's nice to see him happy. He was seen he was seen holding hands with Alexandra Grant. She's an artist and illustrator.
administrator. And unlike many Hollywood relationship stores, she's not 20 or 30 years younger than him. She's 46. Uh -huh. She's arty. She's cool. She's successful. Uh, she's apparently known Keanu for many years. Um, no actual conversation, if, uh, uh, confirmation rather, on whether they're dating. But it appears that the Internet's most cherished boyfriend has uh, found a girlfriend. Inside track from you tomorrow, then, Ditsy. Okay? <laughs> That's right. We I'll have more details. Watch this area. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ditsy Laurent on France 24. Next half hour, we uh, hope to.